Hey guys, how's it going? So tonight I am going to be putting the brand new Forge Log camera plates into the M2 and I'm going to be taking the ground control ones out. You know, uh, for all the crap that I give ground control, I'm a little bit embarrassed to say I've been running their plates for a little while, um, mainly because the Forge Logs weren't going to be ready for my last track day. But now that they're here, it's time to put them in. And for this video, I'm going to be showing it uh, as if you're installing these on a you know car with stock top mounts because quite frankly that's what most people are going to be doing so with that said let's go ahead and get them in and i should probably change clothes okay so let's start taking apart things in the engine bay while the car is on the ground and the reason why i like to do that is just it's at a more convenient working height unless you're like really 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 tall um, so anyways we need to remove these covers on each side and as you can see there are three 10 millimeter cams so we're going to go ahead and turn those cams 90 degrees um, don't torque it too hard because you can accidentally break the plastic stops and then you won't know which way your cam is really uh, facing and then over here on the side of that cover we have uh, an expanding rivet, so you need to use a forked trim tool to kind of pull up the center stud. And once you pull up the center stud, then you can pull out the, uh, the base. Then we can go ahead and pull this cover up and out. Next, we're going to remove all of the various, you know, expanding plastic rivets on this uh, rubber top cover here. So go ahead and take your forked trim tool again and remove all of those. And for the uh, expanding rivet over here on the side, you can see I've actually just taken my pry trim tool and gone in from the front underneath the uh, rubber piece to go ahead and get that. Now we can go ahead and uh, remove this rubber piece and you can see it just kind of pulls it up and uh, you, you can remove it completely or you can just kind of put it off to the side here, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you have an electronic suspension, there'll be a plug coming out of here so now is the time when you'd go and you disconnect that plug. Um, be a little bit careful with it because sometimes they can be a little delicate and it's a, kind of a pain if you manage to break the uh, internal wiring or connector. So now I'm going to go ahead and just get brake torque on the nut that holds the uh, damper to the uh, top mount. So I'm going to stick my uh, 10 millimeter wrench in there and I've got the uh, pass through uh, 18 millimeter on top. I'm just going to break that torque um, so that's easier to unscrew later. Now we don't want to unscrew that nut all the way just yet. We just want to get the brake torque on it so that it's easier to unscrew later when the car is off the ground. Next we're going to work on removing the carbon and aluminum strut braces on this and the reason why you need to do that is because the aluminum brace um, covers some of the bolts on the top of the uh, uh, right side or, dry, or passenger side uh, strut tower. Um, so we're going to start by removing the 13 millimeter bolts that uh, secure the carbon brace. And then there's also a 10 millimeter bolt over here connecting the brace to this uh, coolant tank. And at the rear of the uh, carbon strut brace, uh, the M3 and M4, they have a couple more bolts here. I believe they're uh, E12s. Then we can go ahead and get the carbon brace out of the way. Then we can go ahead and remove the three uh, little plastic uh, push rivets on uh, this piece here. And then we can go ahead and take that piece out and that will reveal the side of the aluminum strut brace. Next we can go ahead and remove the uh, E14 bolt on the side here and if you have an M3 and M4 there should be an E12 behind it in this hole. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, E12 and I'm going to remove these three uh, bolts connecting the aluminum strut brace to the top mount. Uh, some of the M3 and M4s could also have 13 millimeter bolts instead. Now as you can see, I can lift this up quite a bit, enough to get a wrench and you know the socket I need in there to remove these bolts. Um, so you know, I'll leave it up to you whether or not you want to go ahead and remove this brace entirely or if you just want to you know, get it to this point here. If you do want to remove the aluminum brace all the way, we're going to have to start by popping off these covers here. and that will expose two 16 millimeter bolts to remove. Then on the driver's or left side we have one more 10 millimeter bolt that we have to remove connecting this uh, bracket to the aluminum strut brace. Now that everything has been disconnected from the aluminum strut brace we can go ahead and remove it. 
I'm going to remove it over here on the passenger side because I don't want the aluminum strut brace to accidentally touch the positive uh, battery terminal here, just uh, in case. So we got to move this out of the way. Get this up. And then we can pull it out. Now let's send the car up. Now we can go ahead and take our wheels off. So grab your 17 millimeter and make sure you're applying some pressure on the bottom of the wheel when you do your last bolt so it doesn't come off. We can go ahead and take the wheel off. So we're going to start by undoing the uh, end link right here. And to do that, you need a 16 millimeter pass through and a T30 counter hold. So you can see I've got a, a 16 millimeter on a, a, a extension as well as my T30. So I'm going to get that T30 started. Then I'm going to get the 16 millimeter on there. And then I'm just going to unscrew this. And uh, you can do this with an impact as well. Um, if you want to just put the uh, impact on the uh, counter hold, then you can just spin that. Uh, or you can, you know, do it this way and spin the nut. Now we can pop the end link out and we'll just set it, you know, to the side in front here out of the way. Next we want to unclip these wires from these, uh, from this bracket here so that we can let the strut articulator move out when we move it out of the way. Next I'm going to place a jack underneath the rotor to support the uh, knuckle and strut assembly. Then you can go ahead and take your 18 millimeter pass through and your 10 millimeter counter hold and undo the top strut nut and if you didn't put a jack underneath that knuckle this is the point where you would see that strut go whoop, just drop through the hole and come you know crashing down as far as the arm travel below will let it go but since we have a jack this is staying nice and put and so now we will go ahead and lower that jack a bit to release the strut we're lowering the strut just enough so that we can kind of move it over to the side a little bit and leave the uh, shock tower area clear. Now you can go ahead and grab your 13 millimeter if you have the 5 volt top hat version. Um, I believe if you only had 3 volts it was a 16 millimeter but anyhow we can go ahead and remove all but one of these. And when you get to this last bolt you'll want to take your other hand reach underneath the uh, wheel well so that you can support the camber plate when you remove that final bolt. Now you can just push down on the camera plate and take it out of the bottom. You can see if we move the strut out of the way, there's plenty of room for that to come on out. Additionally, you can see I've got this gasket here, this uh, green bluish looking gasket, and it stayed attached to the top mount. If it stays there, great. Um, sometimes that likes to come out with the uh, top mount itself. If it does, then we'll just have to remember to transfer it over to the camber plate. All right, so let's talk about prepping your Vorschlag camera plates for installation. If you've bought a used set of plates, there's really nothing you need to do other than, you know, move the camera slider all the way to, you know, the stock position and lock it down. If you have a brand new set of plates, though, um, you might want to check that all of the various bolt holes uh, or bolt threads are cut properly. In 2021, Vorschlag had a bad batch where not all of these, uh, various um, bolt threads were cut or finished properly and so you would find out you know midway through your install you'd try and take your bolt insert it into you know any one of these and it would only go in like one thread or so or it'd go in you know crooked and uh, and just not go any further and when I spoke to Forschlag about this they said that yes you know they did make a production mistake and they were able to catch some of it and you know were recutting it with a uh, a tap in in the factory but a still a fair amount of those plates went out and I personally have talked to three people where it had happened to them and it actually happened to me on this new set um, one of my plates had that issue and surprisingly this uh, left side plate doesn't so maybe these two plates are from different batches but anyhow how do you uh, rectify this um, if you don't have a tap well uh, first you would have to remove the four hex bolts that lock down the slider so you can take off the rear spring perch and then you can go ahead and take one of those stock, uh, stock bolts from either the uh, strut brace or the peripheral, peripheral top mount mounting, either the, right, the 13 millimeter 
or the E12 bolts. Both of them have the same thread pitch, as you can see, since I have a 13 millimeter on the uh, uh, the, the aluminum brace side, and I put one of the E12s on the uh, peripheral top mount mounting side. And from the back side of the camera plate, you should be able to take that screw, put it in, thread it through all the way, and use that bolt to cut and finish the threads. Um, once you do that, make sure you know all of the uh, holes are, are threaded properly and bolts will go in and out from the top side easily and naturally. Well, then you're ready to install. So I found one more thing to watch out for, and that is with the Forschlag's mounting hardware. Now in my kit, there were two different lengths of bolts. There was this uh, longer one over here in my left hand and a shorter one in my right. And there were eight of these longer ones and two of the shorter ones. And if you're asking, well, why are some longer, why are some shorter? If we take the camber plate, which I have in the like maximum camber position, um, and we max it out, you can see that you know from the bottom here of the five mounting bolt holes, you can only see three of them. Right. So what that means is, is these two bolt holes are uh, covered by the spring perch here. And so that means the bolts that go into them have to be short enough not to reach down and interfere with the spring perch. Uh, and what I found is, is with the longer ones, if you have two longer ones here, um, you know, even with the washers that they're supplied with, they will touch. But the shorter ones, obviously, clear. Now, where is, why is there a problem? Well, as you can see, there's two bolt holes per camber plate which uh, get covered by the spring perch and I was only given two of the shorter bolts when I really need four of them. So uh, how do you remedy this? Well I mean on your initial install you're probably not going to have an issue with this because you're probably just going to be setting this to the minimum camera position um, in which or, or stock camera position right in which case you know these bolt holes are cleared and so you have room for those uh, bolts to extend through. Um, I guess if you're doing this at a shop, you intend to like max out the camber, which this is quite a bit of camber. Um, that's where you would uh, you, you could potentially run into an issue. That said, it's easy to solve on the fly. If you just add, you know, like one more washer to the longer bolt, then it'll clear. Uh, but yeah, you know, this is something I'm going to contact for so I can say, hey, you need to fix this in your kit, and I'm sure they will. So one other thing you might consider doing with the four slide camera plates is changing the orientation of the bump stop. So here I have the stock top mount with the stock front bump stop and when I measured it the very tip of the bump stop protrudes 64 millimeters off of the uh, the base of the uh, spring perch here, right? And when I looked at the same dimension with the setup with the four slide, well you can clearly see that it looks a lot taller. In fact, let me go ahead and grab these, put them side by side so you can see. If I align this you know, the, the bump stop is much taller on the force log spring perch. And so what that means is you will have less free damper travel with the uh, force log than you will with the stock top mount before the bump stop engages. And this dimension um, is uh, something around like, you know, almost 80 millimeters uh, standing off, right? So this was like 64 and this was like, you know, 80. So more than half an inch higher. Um, and you know, that's a, that's a bit of a problem in my opinion, just because I think that uh, free damper travel is very important. But one thing you can do is you can take the bump stop and you can flip it upside down such that the nose fits in this portion um, and actually lowers the bump stop. And so if I go ahead and grab the original spring perch and we look at them, they look much more even. They're not identical. This is still a little bit advanced, uh, you know, advanced towards the strut. But instead of being, you know, let's say somewhere on the order of 16 millimeters, it's only four millimeters or five thirty seconds of an inch. Pretty minuscule. I think you can live with that. Okay, now that the uh, old top mount is gone, let's go ahead and reach in and pull out the uh, the bump stop here and since we saw how the force log uh, works better when this is uh, flipped over let's go ahead and just turn it upside down like so and then we can just go ahead and drop it back in there if you haven't done so already make sure to take the uh, bottom spacer for the force log uh, monoball and the flange will need to be oriented towards uh, the ground but go ahead and put that over the shock shaft so up here you can barely see I'm sliding it over the shock shaft Okay, so now we'll go ahead and take the camera plate, move it up from the bottom, 
get it, uh, get it aligned in here and get one of those um, 13 millimeter bolts and just go ahead and get that started, thread it in by hand just so the plate isn't going to uh, fall back through. Don't forget to make sure that the uh, you know this light blue green gasket is uh, between the top mount and the camber plate. Then we'll make sure to put in the rest of the 13 millimeter bolts to hold the uh, camera plate to the uh, shock tower. And remember, you know, either use the uh, the short bolt or a you know one of the regular length bolts with double washers for these two holes, um, which are you know facing the engine. And you know, if your if your kit only has uh, two of these short bolts, you know, one for each side. Um, and you have to use a double washer one. It doesn't really matter which one of these gets the short bolt or which one gets the one with double washers. Now we can take our 13 millimeter and torque wrench and set that to 30 newton meters or 22 foot pounds and go ahead and torque all of these 13 millimeter bolts. Um, one thing I do want to point out about this four slug hardware is you can clearly see that all of these are marked grade 10.9 which is uh, which is really nice. You know, it's the same grade as the factory bolts, so always nice to know that uh, Forschlag is not uh, cheapening out there. I have some other brands they use uh, lower grade hardware for this kind of stuff. And now you can go ahead and start jacking up the strut, making sure that the spring is uh, appropriately sat on uh, the spring perch below, and that the shock shaft is coming up through the monoball. Now we can go ahead and take the uh, 22 millimeter nut that uh, Forschlag provides and go ahead and get that started on uh, the shock shaft and what may help is is reaching underneath and grabbing the shock shock and like wiggling it around a bit um, so that you, know, you can make sure that it's centered and that this nut can uh, bite and um, uh, thread on properly and once you know that this is uh, you know caught the thread and is going down on the shock shaft go ahead and jack up the strut some more so that there's a, a decent amount of load on the spring. And now we can torque this nut down. It really pains me that uh, Forschlag wants you to use, you know, your 22 millimeter on an impact to do it. Um, you know, I don't see why you shouldn't be able to counter hold. Like at least, you know, looking at this stock strut here, um, there is a decent amount of the 10 millimeter counter hold sticking up and I can fit this 10 millimeter, um, you know, narrow and deep socket in there. So if I had a 22 millimeter uh, pass through, I, I should be able to do this. But since I don't have a 22 millimeter pass through, um, I guess I'll just have to do it the four slug way. So I guess, so I'll go ahead and put my impact on here and uh, zip it a few times. Next, make sure all of the uh, camber slider lockdown screws are torqued and these will uh, get torqued with your six millimeter to 18 foot pounds. Now go ahead and adjust your jack if you need to so that we can take the end link and insert it back into the mount. And then we'll take the 16 millimeter nut and put that back on. Then we can get our T30 counter hold, 16 millimeter pass through and tighten this nut back up. And then this will get torqued to 56 newton meters or 41 foot pounds. If for some reason you're unlucky and uh, you can't just uh, torque this with a socket and the uh, ball joint keeps spinning. You may have to do something funky like here where I've got the T30 counter hold still in there and then I've got uh, my torque wrench with a crow's foot on the uh, pass through socket. If you do it this way, make sure that crow's foot is 90 degrees from the head or handle of your uh, torque wrench. Otherwise the torque you have uh, set on the torque wrench will not actually be the torque applied. Then we're free to go ahead and lower the jack and remove it. Next, don't forget to uh, re-secure all of the wiring inside the wheel well. Now we can go ahead and put our wheels on. And remember, just apply a little pressure on the bottom so that uh, the wheel doesn't want to slide off. And then we can go ahead and put our wheel bolts in, 17 millimeter, and we'll do so in a star pattern. All right, with the wheel on, you can go ahead and uh, lower the car, or if you're just working on one corner, go ahead and lower just that corner of it. Okay, now it's time to put the aluminum brace back, and I'm going to manipulate this from the right or passenger side so that we don't accidentally touch um, this uh, 
positive power terminal and go through the brace through the body to you know create a short um, so what I'll do is we'll go to the center here we'll lift up this flap so that we can tuck the, those uh, the center mounts in so we'll slide that underneath that panel and then we can go ahead and rock it into position and we'll make sure over on the left or passenger side that the uh, bracket for this uh, coolant tank um, goes over the brace, not under it. Now we can start by putting in the 16 millimeter bolts in the uh, center part of the brace. And uh, I'm just going to put these in hand tight first because I want to get all of the bolts in, uh, make sure everything's aligned before we really start torquing things down. Next we'll go ahead and start the three E12 volts that secure the uh, brace to the camber plate. And then lastly we can put the E14 bolt in the side and then another E21 back in this hole if you have an M3 and M4. Now we can torque these bolts. The E14 gets torqued to 34 newton meters or 25 foot pounds and the uh, E12 will get torqued to 28 newton meters or 21 foot pounds. Now we can torque the three E12 bolts holding the brace to the camber plate and these will get torqued to 28 newton meters or 21 foot pounds. On the left or driver's side we have this, uh, this bracket for the coolant tank so let's go ahead and move this over so this arm goes in that hole. You can see the other one. We can go ahead and insert the 10 millimeter bolt. And then this just needs to get you know, lightly hand tight snugged. Now we can return to these center bolts for the aluminum brace and uh, torque that with our 16 millimeter. And the torque spec for this is going to be 56 newton meters or 41 foot pounds. And if you're using new bolts, you can also do the uh, extra 90 degrees to stretch them and lock them in. Don't forget to put the little covers on for uh, these bolts up here, securing the aluminum brace to the uh, you know, firewall area. Now we can take our carbon fiber brace and go ahead and uh, get that into place. Then we can take our various uh, bolts, right, the short ones, they go in the front here, right, these longer ones go in the rear. So we'll go ahead and just uh, get these all started by hand. And then all of these 13 millimeter bolts will get torqued to 28 newton meters or 21 foot pounds. And BMW wants us to do the front ones first and then work our way back. Now let's put our side cover panels back in and then insert our three plastic push rivets. Then we can take the rubber cover that goes over the top mount and uh, get all that into place. Now we can put the three plastic uh, push rivets in here as well as securing the one down here. Don't forget the 10 millimeter bolt here that connects the coolant tank to the carbon strut brace. And uh, this just needs to be you know, lightly hand tight snug. And then don't forget your side cover. Get that into place. And then we'll use our 10 millimeter to turn the uh, three cams 90 degrees so that the uh, arrows on them uh, match or line up. And then if there are any side holes for uh, push pins like this one here, go ahead and get that in place. And then lastly, don't forget to uh, torque your wheel bolts to uh, 140 newton meters or 104 foot pounds in a star pattern.